in the middle of a brutal debate on health care. How many of you have been following it? Raise your hands. I think almost all. Uh, it's hard to escape the battle. Uh, for me to wake up this morning and look at the front page of the local paper, The Desert Sun, and see a story about David, the success of this great program, Susan, uh, it just lifted me. It did, because I've been um, more than upset about what could be happening. Hearing from Raul, Congressman Ruiz, also lifts me up. To have someone in that position who worked so hard to become a physician and who embraced the motto that physicians have, do no harm, and to have him back there looking after us, not only on health care, but everything else is important. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Even though he's not here. Now, this Desert AIDS project is incredible. I have a lot of friends who donate their time 24-7 to it. They're sleeping in this morning and sent me here. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara Keller and Terry. Uh, but I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled because David's idea, as far as I know, that's how this happened, became a reality his vision became a reality, and the project has saved lives. That's a reality. And we owe you so much for your compassion, your smarts, your understanding. Let's have a round of applause for this visionary leader. Now, if, if, if every, every town and city and Valley in America did this program, we could say bye-bye to the epidemic. And I just want to say, many of you heard me before talk about my experience with HIV AIDS issue. Um, but for those of you who have heard it, I apologize for being repetitive, but there are some new people here. When we were facing this mysterious unknown crisis, I was a congresswoman uh, representing San Francisco, Marin County, the Bay Area. Now, San Francisco was ground zero. And people were dying, and no one knew why. There was no name. There was no hope. There was no understanding. And I would hear stories from people. My friend is wasting away wasting away. Um, that was the 80s. Because of science, we found out HIV was the villain here. And you had to get there early, and we had to figure out a way to control it before it turned into AIDS, OK? So could we have a round of applause for the scientists <laughs> in America, in the Pasteur Institute? I look back is not just to tell you I was there and I saw it, but it's to understand how we got to where we are today. It was through caring. It was through activism by the LGBT community. It was through science. And I remember, because Ronald Reagan was president, and he wouldn't say the word AIDS until his friend got AIDS. We need to be more compassionate than that. We need to understand that when one person is hurt, we all suffer. And that is a fact. That's what public health is all about. In a way, public health efforts save us, of course. Because what we know is not only has this project that you have made possible saved 500 people, it has saved countless others because those 500 people now know, take precaution, they're under treatment. That's the whole point. 
So we're not talking about hundreds of lives here. We're talking about potentially thousands of lives here. And if we did this all over the country, you know it would be pretty extraordinary. Now let me be clear, and I know what I'm about to say is a fact, because David told me. <laughs> and David is quoted in the newspaper this morning. The ACA, the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, made this program possible. It made it possible because of the expansion of Medicaid. Because of the expansion of Medicaid. So there was some funding coming in the door. In addition to all the other funding that Desert Aid Project gets through philanthropy and other government programs. But the expansion of Medicaid is crucial. One out of five of us in America relies on Medicaid. One out of five. So when someone stands before a TV camera and says, oh, we're really saving the program. No, no, no. No. That's hogwash. When you cut a program that is funded at levels to address a need, it's not funded out of clean air. If all of a sudden everybody was rich, we wouldn't need Medicaid. And you know, I think, and I'm sure you know, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Medicare and Medicaid. And it helps the most vulnerable people among us. And I mean that. People who are very low income, people who are disabled, pregnant women, the elderly in nursing homes. And I don't know how many of you saw the protest in front of my old pal Mitch McConnell's office in Washington, D.C. How many of you saw the protest and saw what happened? For those of you who did not see what happened, severely disabled people were pulled out of the wheelchair to get them away from the office. A couple who were hooked up, they wheeled them away. But they dragged people who couldn't walk out of their wheelchairs. What does that say about who we are as a nation? This fight we're in right now over the ACA is about a lot more than health care. It's about who we are, what kind of country we are. And there was a TV show that had a severely disabled man hooked up to machines, everything gone but his incredible brain brilliant, and he could speak via computers in some way. And to hear his words, he wants to live. He is learning. He is contributing. And who are we to say, no, sorry. You know, <laughs> I'm a spiritual person. And I don't know how anyone who says they're a spiritual person could walk away from the most vulnerable among us. Now, we've come a long way in this epidemic. I told you what it was like. For those of you who are too young to know, and some of you who are old enough to want to forget, I told you what it was like. I remember going to a congressman from Kentucky who was the chairman of the Appropriations Committee in the 80s. I was green around the edges. I served in local government, but never in Washington. And I was so nervous, his name was Bill Natcher. And he had been in Congress for a long time. And he was probably a little younger than I was. And I thought he was like the oldest person I'd ever seen because I was so <laughs> young then. And I went to him and I thought to myself, I don't even know if he knows anyone who's openly gay. He probably didn't, seriously. He had this small rural district. And 
I held back my emotions and I was calm and I said, we have a mysterious disease in San Francisco. We don't know what it is, we're very worried and it has hit our gay community. And we must help. And we don't have any money now. We had, Henry Waxman had gotten a few million dollars the year before. And I said, we need to triple that. We need to triple that. And he looked at me and he said, Congresswoman, he said, I don't care if a person's gay or not, people are sick and I am going to help. That was something else for me. And we got $12 million. We now have billions every year. But that first money that I got, and then we set up a task force at my request, and we brought Elizabeth Taylor. We've done all these things to get to a point where if you get tested early, you're going to be OK. And everyone's going to be OK. That's why this is such an important day. And it is ironic in the best of ways that this day happened, just when they're about to vote, to dismantle the program that made this program possible. So if you haven't written a note to Mitch McConnell or John Cornyn or John Thune, the people who were leading this effort, or to President Trump who says he doesn't support cutting Medicaid and is cutting Medicaid, it is important that you reach out today. So. Until there's a cure, which we will have, we will have, um, getting tested is the closest thing. And I am so proud to now live in this community where there's such understanding that we are all in this together. This is, this program, David and Susan, it's a tribute to compassion, it's a tribute to common sense, it's a tribute to cooperation. Nobody asks anyone if they're a Republican or a Democrat. They get tested. We care about everyone. That's what this is about. That's an American value. It's not a Democratic Party value or a Republican Party value. It's an American value. So we have to get out of those partisan debates and walk down together along this path this path, this kind of path, that really helps us all. I'm thrilled to be here today. I'm going to run because I have, everybody says, don't you have a lot of time now that you're retired? I'm not retired. I'm just not there. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had a choice, what would it be? No, <laughs> just kidding. I'm very proud of Kamala Harris. I'm very proud that my seat is held by this great, terrific woman who's in the trenches. And I'm very proud to use some of my time. As long as I'm perky and vertical, um, I'm going to be in the trenches with all of you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Desiree Project.